Alright. I'm going to be using this tone dialer. I'm going to enter a phone number off camera. And I've entered that number. Play it for you once. Play it again. Oops. Alright, so we have our number in here. Call connected. And then that's where I would leave my message. Hang up. Alright, so. As I said before, sometimes these tone dialers were used with red boxing. Now what would happen is that after replacing the crystal, you can see the asterisk button here, you would use combinations of the asterisk button to create your tones for your coins. And then you would use uh, preset buttons to save them. Now if you want to know, the, uh, the coin tones were uh, in America. They're used with a combination of um, two tones, 1700 hertz and 2200 hertz. And for five cents, for that tone, you would do 66 milliseconds of these two tones combined. If you wanted 10 cents, you'd do 62 milliseconds, and then you'd pause 60, I'm sorry, 66 milliseconds. You'd pause 66 milliseconds, and then you'd play 66 milliseconds again. For 25, that was a bit more complicated. You'd have 33 milliseconds on, and then 33 milliseconds off, and then you'd repeat that four more times, three to all of five times, and that would give you a quarter. Now, besides from the tone dialers, people um, have also been using stuff like MP3 players for red boxing. You can use CD players, or you can even use every simple cassette recorder. You could use a micro cassette recorder. I'm going to show you again with the eighth inch cord. I can plug it into my MP3 player here. Plug the other end into the mini amplifier. Again, hopefully this is not too loud. But here's five cents. So there you go. And you can also have 10 cents. And then finally, you have 25 cents. And that one was a little bit faster, as you could hear. Now, when you're talking about red boxing, um, reportedly it no longer works, it stopped working in the early 90s, like 1993, 1994. Though I've heard recently that it still works in some places, um, even in America I've heard it works still in Britain in some places. And um, apparently for the longest time the legend has been that there's only one more payphone you can red box with and it's in Alaska. Though uh, recently I've been seeing stuff that makes me think otherwise. Hope you guys enjoyed that segment. Um, talking about the contest from last episode. Nobody ended up winning that contest, so they didn't get to put a voicemail in my voicemail box. However, if you noticed in the last segment, I dialed the same number using DTMF. Now, if you can decipher that phone number, call it, leave a message, I will put that message on the credits for the next episode, and that's my second contest. So let's see if we can do that first. Now, we're going to get started with the next two segments, the first of which is a CED showcase, and then the second segment is building a portable radio station. Hope you like it. 
What I have here today are capacitance electronic discs. They're also known as CEDs or video discs. They're made for the Selectivision player by RCA. And uh, the titles I have here are The African Queen. Then I have The Godfather. I have this in two discs actually. Same movie, but it needs two discs. And then I have two different copies of MASH. But I believe they're the same movie. And now, like I said, these are capacitance electronic discs. And uh, as the first word in that implies, these discs are essentially capacitors. Now, if you know anything about vinyl records, they have the record and then use a stylus, which picks up vibrations on the record, and then uses a transducer to convert the vibrations into music. Now these discs are essentially big capacitors. The um, side of the disc that is read by a stylus, it picks up electrical energy directly from the disc and then it turns this into an FM signal which can then be used to get video and audio. Now these discs were designed by RCA in 1960. Three, I believe is when they started working on these and they didn't have a product to release until 1981 so they spent over a decade working on these things and they were thinking about abandoning them however it, they were already millions of dollars into it so they had to finish it up or else they would lose a lot of money and um, upon launch there was about 50 titles and it kept growing um, good things about these are that they were in a way very early ways to get videos out to people and they were also pretty inexpensive at the time compared to other formats. Um, having said that though, there were definitely flaws with it. For example, the discs, when they were read by the machine, it, they spin at about 450 RPM. So if you were trying to pause the disc at a specific spot, it wouldn't work. The disc would be way too fast, it could not stop to get that frame that you wanted. So usually it would just stop and go to a blank screen. Um, other problems with this disc format is that you couldn't record anything onto them. They were single play. Um, every side, since it's like a record in here, each side has 60 minutes of playtime. So for large movies like this, you would need two discs. Or for another example, there's an hour on each side. So after you watch an hour of the movie, then you'd have to flip it over to watch the other part of the movie. So you'd have to actually physically get up and change it, and that was kind of a hassle. And then you're also talking about, you know, VHS and Betamax were just coming out. Those, you know, were consumer friendly, they were getting inexpensive, you could record a lot on them, they were long, you didn't have to change out tapes. And then you also had laser discs. Laser discs were like giant CDs, I'll talk about them later. And they could have much more stuff on them. They could have different audio tracks. They could have digital stuff go along. This is just analog. And then you also have the problem of the condition that the discs can get in. Um, RCA has said that video discs only last ideally about 500 plays. When something like a laser disc, you can have infinite number of plays. And the problem is that dust gets onto the surface and it causes the disc to skip. And then the stylus will also stop picking up the disc. And it'll get dusty and it'll need replacing. And these parts are harder and harder to find. So the odds of actually finding a working select division are pretty slim unless you're willing to pay a bunch of money for them. And now I'm actually going to show you the inside of one of these. You can easily open them. See this part right here? This moves and it makes a little bit of noise. There's actually some holes in here for when you normally take this. If you had a select division player, you would slide it in and then the disc would pop out this side here and then you'd pull out this casing, this plastic casing and the disc would be in there on something called a spine which I'm going to show you in a second and to open up one of these if you have one you take a little jeweler screwdriver it doesn't really matter what kind it is as long as you can get it in here and you hold the disc and you put it in the crack in here and you push that in a little bit and you pop up this side and you do the same for the opposite side and it pops up here. So you can see the spine's a little shaky. And the disc, you have a shiny disc here that looks similar to a record. I'll bring a, I have a random record over here for comparison. About the same size. I think they're both 12 inches. 
And then so when this goes in the machine, 